you know, I do movies in the three to five million range. That's catering budget on the Spider-Man or Avengers movie. You know, those are $300 million movies. And here you and I are trying to do movies with a positive message. And it's like pulling teeth to try to raise money for messages out there that have a positive influence on the culture. Um, our dear friend, Andrew Breitbart, he said it, you know, politics runs downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood does, along with the mainstream media. So my battle is there to try to get these movies funded, to get these movies out there that have something positive, something good. Actor Kevin Sorbo attained international stardom through his lead role in Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. And then following that success, Sorbo had the lead role as Captain Dylan Hunt in Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. He's worn many hats in the entertainment industry. He's been an actor, a director, a producer. He's been part of many faith-based projects, including Soul Surfer, What If, God's Not Dead, and Let There Be Light. Hey, Kevin, thanks so much for taking time to be with us today. It's good to be here. I'm impressed with your set. That's pretty fancy, I gotta say. You like that? I like your set. That sword over the top, uh, that, is that a claymore? I mean, that, that is a serious weapon. This is a one-off. This is an original. The last, the last day of filming on the set of Hercules after seven years, my uh, props department made this for me. It's got a wonderful inscription on it. Uh, it says, you know, the, the, the journey may be over, but the legend lives on. Uh, and it was just, it was, you know, seven years in New Zealand. You know how it's like. You've been on a series for a long time. The last day, it's kind of an emotional day because that's your yes. family. And uh, it was, it was, it was, it was tough. I broke down trying to give a speech at the end. That's there, it. And, and this you... was a gift they gave me. So it, it sits up there as a wonderful reminder of, uh, you know, just a, a great time in my life. It was a lot of fun. Well, I, I, Thor's hammer doesn't even hold a candle to Hercules's sword. I like it. Thank you very much. Hey. And, you know, that, those guys went on to make all the props for Lord of the Rings. I mean, they, they won Academy Awards, these guys. Kevin, we, we have a ton in common. I mean, you think about it, we're, we're, we're both actors. We both uh, have worked with our wives on set. We've been a part of many faith-based projects, and we happen to be the target of many Babylon Bee articles. What is with that, by the way? What, what is with Kirk Cameron and Kevin Sorbo Babylon Bee articles? I'll take it as a badge of honor. I think, we, I think we should. I think what the work they do is fantastic there, the bee and the not the bee. And I repost a lot of the things they do because I, I think they, uh, they're, they're, using, they're using satire to poke fun of the ridiculousness of our world right now. And uh, at the same time, uh, they, they, promote, uh, they promote God. And I, I, I love that. I love that combo. You've met these guys. I've met these guys. And uh, I, think, I think we got to get them out there as much as possible. If you're not following people out there, you got to follow Babylon B. That's right, and we gotta learn to laugh at ourselves. And you can do that, at least I can do that, by reading Babylon B articles. Uh, I, I pointed out to the editor-in-chief that he, uh, he did one that really caused me to examine myself when, when, when the headline said, Kirk Cameron, uh, no, lost Kirk Cameron, wanders onto the set of a good movie. And I thought, wow, I, I need to start making better movies or I'm gonna be the brunt of a few more jokes. <laughs> Kevin, everyone knows who follows you on social media, uh, that you are a conservative Christian. Uh, how is that received when you show up on set? Uh, when, when you show up to act or whether you're there as a producer or as a director? I mean, is, are you embraced with open arms? People ask questions or are you ridiculed? Kirk, I think you know what it's like. I mean, Hollywood loves guys like you and me. I mean, when I tell people I'm a Christian <laughs> and a conservative, it's like being a double leper in Hollywood. So. Um, <laughs> What, what's interesting? What's interesting to me that what I felt is being a conservative is enough, but being a Christian seems to be even a more bad thing to be in Hollywood. It's very strange to me. Um, my manager and agent really bid farewell to me um, eleven years ago. Now they it was like an intervention. They brought me in the office and said we can't work with you anymore. And I was like, why? Well, the studios and all that, because of your stance. I'm going, wow. And you guys are the ones who are always screaming for tolerance and freedom of speech. But as you know, in the world of Hollywood, the secular world of Hollywood, that's a one-way street. And thank God for independent movies. Because, you know, I, my wife and I, we have our own production company called Sorbo Studios. Please go to sorbostudios.com and check it out. But we've been doing most of our own productions on our own, finding the funding, either producing them. Uh, I've been directing them but, uh, and acting in them, but it's, thank God the independent world is still around because without it, I don't think I'd be working at all right now. 
Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You talked about sort of being the double leper, uh, a, a conservative, but then also a Christian. And uh, I wonder what, what, what that must be like if, if you're on the opposite side of the political and religious fence as, as guys like you and me. I mean, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they think that uh, if they get a guy like you around them too much, I don't know, you might, you know, as a conservative, you could sick, sick Tucker Carlson on them or something like that. But if you're a Christian, well, then, th- th- then it's God, right? And then that, that's, that's the next level. Um, let, let me ask you this. Do you think that you've been hindered from uh, really getting the opportunities that you've wanted as an actor because of your religious faith? Oh, I think, I think there's no question about it. I mean, I, and, and that's okay. I mean, you know, God opened another door for me and uh, the world I'm on now, I, I love it. I mean, certainly, as you know, in the TV world uh, with, with our series, uh, the, the, the pay rates are pretty darn good compared to what you get paid in independent movies, but that's okay to me. I mean, I, 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 Hollywood owes me nothing. And to me, it's like, this is a different path and a different door that opened up to me. And I, I love the road I'm on. I like the movies that I'm doing. You see the things coming out of Hollywood. Walt Disney said back in the 1950s that movies and television will influence our youth. Well, look what's going on in the world right now in every major city around the world, every country. Um, I want to do movies that have a positive influence on people, have love, laughter, hope, redemption, faith, things that are missing in so many movies in Hollywood right now that really has so much anger and hate out there. I mean, every time there's any kind of a shooting somewhere, Hollywood A-listers come out and say, we got to stop doing this. You know, we got to get rid of guns. These are the same people who do these incredibly violent movies and killing 100 people every movie with guns. So the hypocrisy just keeps reeking out of there for me. And I just go, come on, you guys, if you want to play this card, then 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 don't be hypocritical about it. Go down that road that you, that you want to be a, a champion for. So I, I don't know. It's just this has been good for me. And um, yeah, I mean, I've lost some things. I'm surprised I got a role in the Reagan movie um, that's coming out later this year with Dennis Quaid. But I did get a nice little role in that playing a pastor. So maybe uh, in their mind, they were typecasting me, even though I'm not a pastor. I'm, I'm one you know, in movies. So. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I'm very fortunate. I shot four movies last year we can talk about. And I got a couple more lined up this year, which I'm very excited about. Kevin, how do you know when to speak up about something? You're pretty vocal on social media. You're known as a guy who stands for your convictions. When do you close your mouth and when do you stand up and say something? Yeah, it's 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 hard not to close my mouth. But they're, I, I, they've done such a good job of beating us down through the mainstream media, through the government, just over and over and over again, and the anger and hatred out there. Look, I can post on on Twitter, I can say it's a beautiful day, and I'll have 5% of my followers say, I hope you die. I hope your daughter gets raped. I mean, the stuff they say is wow. unbelievable to me, the hate out there. I mean, these are, and, and you know, these people, they have their own problems. I think these people do not have that love your neighbor as yourself. These are people filled with so much anger and hate and disappointment in their lives. They're pointing at you and me, God, family, friends, the world for their problems. And the reality is they got to look in the mirror and say, this is where it starts, but they don't do that. But, um, you know, Facebook took me down about eight months ago, total ban. And I was posting things about COVID, but I was posting things what other doctors were saying. Hey, look what these doctors are saying. What do you think? But that was against their community rules, apparently, that if you have an opposing point of view. Um, on Twitter, thank God they haven't taken me down yet. I mean, on Twitter, I post things pretty comical. Uh, I said, if you want to get rid of COVID, uh, tell the Clintons that COVID has something on them. <laughs> so that one Ooh. got quite a few. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, if you want to get rid of, if you want to get rid of uh, masks in schools, then take away the school desk and replace them with restaurant tables. That got a lot of good hits as well. <laughs> I'm I'm just, I'm just saying we got it. We got it. We can't be afraid, you know, of uh, what people are going to say, what people are going to come after us. Because um, if we start censoring ourselves and censoring the truth, then this country is already enough in trouble the way it is. But we got to keep fighting back, and that's why I tell people I'm not here to wake up the sheep. I'm here to wake up the lions. Good. Good. I, I, I was talking with Charlie Kirk one day and he said the worst kind of censorship out there is self-censorship. When we've been so conditioned to do this, then nobody else has to censor us because we're already doing the work for them. So I'm glad you're standing up for the things that you believe in, the things that are important. And free speech is something that this country uh, has always championed and defended. Kevin, let me ask you this question. You've been a part of so many different projects. You've been in 60 different movies alone. How do you choose the projects you want to be a part of? 
Well, it's actually, um, there's about a dozen there, I, dozen in there I wish I didn't do, but you can't plan on those things all the time. But, um, you know, I, I get a lot of scripts through independent writers, obviously, and uh, through my site. And, you know, I'll give scripts 20 pages. If they don't, uh, they're, they're, uh, no interest from me after 20 pages, I just, I just move on. Uh, but th the biggest thing is I've got probably a, a dozen scripts that I want to do. I mean, I've, I've gone through a thousand scripts and I said, no, no, no. Okay, these are the ones I want to do. So that is more important to me to raise money than to raise money for another startup that I'm not attached to. And I keep telling people that, too. I said, if you get it funded, I like your movie, but get it funded. We can talk. I just want to have the energy. I want to, my energy is focused on the ones that I want to do. And as you know, it's like pulling teeth. You know, I do movies in the three to five million range. That's catering budget on the Spider-Man or Avengers movie. You know, those are three hundred million dollar movies. And here you and I are trying to do movies with a positive message. And it's like pulling teeth to try to raise money for messages out there that have a positive influence on the culture. Um, our dear friend, Andrew Breitbart, he said it, you know, politics runs downstream from culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood does, along with the mainstream media. So my battle is there to try to get these movies funded, to get these movies out there that have something positive, something good. I've got four movies coming out this year that are shot in the can. Two of them I directed. One is called uh, Miracle in East Texas. It's a true story set in 1930. I got Lou Gossett Jr. in this movie. I got John Ratzenberg in this movie. My wife Sam was awesome in the movie. I've got uh, the Reagan movie. I just finished directing and acting in the next Left Behind chapter called Rise of the Antichrist. We are a go. I just finished my final edit on it. They want to get this thing up by, by Easter. And I've yeah, got yeah. an Kevin, amazing Kevin, doc Kevin I, I know you got all these great movies, and, and that's really great. <laughs> but look, it, I, I just, I've got a little bit of a beef with you. This whole new okay. Left Behind movie, I didn't get a phone call. You know, I got a little I history with that whole, that whole franchise. You, you, I didn't get a call from the casting director. I was left behind again. Nick Cage <laughs> did the same thing <laughs> with the reboot of the first one. What's, what's going on? Well, I took over Nicolas Cage's role. I didn't take over yours. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you, you hope to what? accomplish with another up, Left Behind movie? It's the guys at Cloud 10. You know those guys. You got to bring it up with them. <laughs> now, tell me, what, what, are, what are you hoping to accomplish with this next Left Behind movie? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, the rapture's happened, obviously. Uh, the world is a pretty, you know. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, Did you say the rapture has already happened? Hold on. Yeah. Guys, why are we still we're here? We're still here. Wait, we're, we're still here on the set of TBN. <laughs> this I is a problem. somewhere along the line, we, we, we screw it up. But uh, no, it's a little, it's a little darker. It's a little grittier than I think the other ones that have been out there. And uh, you know, we'll see how it all, all pieces together. But I, they wrote a great story. They made it very today. Um, so you're, you're going to deal with uh, the cancel culture and the wokeness and the, um, you know, it's it's going to be. I think people will find it pretty fascinating. I think they did a great job with the rewrite on it. Kevin, I, I want to know more about some of the lessons that you've learned throughout your career in the entertainment industry. Stuff that that we can all learn from. Um, Kevin, I know that being an actor involves a bit of hustle. Sometimes people think that, oh, well, you just showed up one day, you, you're handsome and you got muscles, boom, you're a movie star. Or you can sing a song and all of a sudden you've got a recording contract. There is a work ethic, and I've heard you talk about this before. Talk about the, the, the challenge of being successful in the entertainment industry. I'm going to go back to uh, two, two summers I had in college. I, I was a caddy at this private country club. And, you know, my dad was a school teacher. I'm the fourth of five kids. My mom's a stay-at-home mom. We didn't have money. My, my clothes and my older brother hand me down. I, I, I started a paper. I was nine years old. For seven years, I got up at 4.30 in the morning in the Minnesota winters delivering 80 newspapers. My, my dad and mom taught really hard work ethic for all of us. And when I got to this country club to caddy for these very wealthy guys, whether they're 25 or 85. And I would ask them all, how did you become successful? Every single one of them said, oh, I failed. And then I failed again and failed and failed and failed. And I went, that's interesting. And they say, failure is a positive. Don't look at it as a negative. Mm. And uh, a dear friend of mine, when I went to Hollywood to pursue that actor's dream, he said to me, this is a buddy of mine I've known since I was two years old. We were neighbors. And he said, Sorbs, remember, it's called show business, not, not show show. And I went out there realizing I'm going to treat it like a business. And uh, I, I pounded the pavement. I remember bugging my agents all the time. Hey, I heard about this, heard about that. Yeah. I remember one agent says, Kevin, I've got 100 other clients. I said, I don't care about your clients. Do you think they care about me? 
let me have the opportunity to be rejected. Let me get in that room. And, you know, if they don't take me, they don't take me. But don't let me sit at home and not have that chance. It's all about repetition. I worked hard. I got myself in the best acting classes, um, studied with three wonderful coaches over six years. And um, to me, it was like, just don't give up. And I tell people all the time, don't let anyone set your limitations, especially yourself. And I, I follow that rule all the time. That's great advice. That's great advice. Tell me a little bit more about the documentaries that you have in production right now. Um, you, you, you mentioned a couple of them, one with John Lennox and, and being in yeah. Israel. Oh, tell us about those. Well, I, I, I got involved in doing documentaries about six, seven years ago with Tim Mahoney. And he spent 10 years, he's a fellow Minnesota guy, he spent 10 years in Egypt uh, proving the uh, Exodus happened. It's called Exodus Pas Patterns of Evidence. And I narrated it. And that sort of started the ball rolling for me to do these, these documentaries. And I had the number one documentary that was out uh, for five months last year in Amazon. And it's called Before the Wrath. Go to beforetherath.com. It deals with... Um, the second coming. And um, it's a very fascinating, very educational. I do a follow up with these guys. It's coming out later this year. And this Brent Miller's company and it's called Eating with the Enemy. I love this title, Eating with the Enemy. It deals with the Last Supper and the disciples. And um, hmm. Interesting. as you know, you had, of course, you had Judas and you had Thomas, but you had a lot of those guys when Jesus was being crucified saying, hey, you were with them. Oh, no, I never knew the guy. I know you got me mistaken, you know, so. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. And then I did one of John Lennox called Against the Tide. John Lennox is an apologist. For those who don't know him, he is a rock star in that world. And he, he's got this wonderful sense of humor. He's got amazing knowledge. He's a retired math professor from Oxford. We sh shot three weeks in Oxford, two weeks in Israel. And uh, I, I call it apologetics for dummies like me because this guy will, will teach you so much on how to defend your faith in a secular world. I mean, he's he's amazing. He was so much fun to be around. And as you know, you know him, and he sounds like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> it just, <laughs> he just cracks me up with how much love and laughter and joy he has in his heart. You can't help but like the guy. Do you think that people are responding more to faith-based projects today than when they did, say, when we made them 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Do you think that the, uh, that, the depth of darkness and immorality and the spiritual apathy that we see around us is actually creating a hunger and a thirst for these kinds of projects? Oh, there's no question. I mean, I'm sure you get it too. When I travel to airports or hotel lobbies, wherever it may be, it used to be people come up to me, hey, I loved you on Hercules. I loved you on Andromeda. 90% of the time now, it's please make more movies like Soul Surfer and God's Not Dead and Let There Be a Light. Please, please, please make those movies. Yeah. And I tell them, oh, then you got to tell the world when they're out there because I'll do the best I can because we need word of mouth to get these things out there. A God's Not Dead movie that's $2 million budget makes $70 million in theaters, that's a godsend. And that comes down to word of mouth. And that's what we have to have out there. And we're living in a really dark world these last couple of years. It's always been dark. But right now it's crazy what's going on with government control over our lives and the hate and the anger just perpetuating the cancel culture, uh, Antifa, all these different things that are happening right now, destruction of people's lives and personal property. We need to find a place where there's love and laughter out there. And the movies that you do and the movies that I do and the documentaries we put out, uh, you know, these are the ones I think are, are going to show the light. We need that light at the end of this very long and dark tunnel. And I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because I love, I love it. And I'm going to keep uh, making movies that, uh, you know, lead people down a more positive road than a negative one because they want it. There's 80 million households in America alone that want the kind of product that you and I are part of. You're a dad. I have six kids. And mm -hmm. many parents who are watching this right now are deeply concerned about the kind of messages that are coming to their kids through the media. Yeah. How can parents protect their children or their grandchildren? And what kind of conversations do you think they need to be having about media with their kids? Take them out of public school. Take them public out. Public school is horrible. Take them out. Do you know because of COVID, two million more people, two million more kids now are being homeschooled because are, finally their eyes are opening. Or maybe they knew it, but they didn't do anything about it before. They're opening their eyes and going, oh, my gosh, look what these schools are doing to our kids because it's insane. When I was in school, I never had teachers tell me to believe in God or not believe in God. Never had teachers me telling me to vote this way or vote that way. They taught math, they taught English, they taught biology, they taught economics, they taught the things they were hired to teach. It's a whole different world out there right now. 
And we got to take get the get the gloves off and say enough is enough. And we got to sit there and stand up for what's going on with our kids. And uh, it, the only way to do it is not being afraid to do it. But fear is an amazing weapon. And as you know, governments of every level are using fear to control our lives at every twist and turn. And enough is enough. And we need to fight back. And I'll tell you, in 2022, this year right now, we better fight back at the voting booth. And we better have honest elections is what I'm saying. We can't have anything happen like it's happened down the past before. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. And we've been warned by our founders and even people before that, people uh, like the German monk Martin Luther, who said that he believes that any kind of a school system that is devoid of the scriptures, devoid of the word of God, will turn to be the great gates of hell and produce the worst, most wicked machinery that propagates anti-God, anti-Christian uh, beliefs and ethics in our children. And so we know that whoever controls education controls the future because they have the key to the hearts and minds of our kids. And I really appreciate the work that you and your wife, Sam, are doing in, in this area of education. Um, Kevin, what kind of messages do you think the world needs to hear today? Uh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm going to go back to don't let anyone set your limitations. I really honestly believe that you've got to break forward and you can't sit there and be afraid to speak up. Oh, my gosh, I might lose my friends. I might lose my job. Well, then there's a better job and better friends waiting for you around the corner. We can't let fear control everything. So I'm telling people right now, please just just, you know, pray about it, whatever you have to do to find that answer. But look in the mirror and face yourself and say, OK, these are the things I know I have to do because we all know it. Deep down, we know. We know the difference between right and wrong, people. We just know it. It's just a matter of choice. You know, every time we get in a bad mood in this family, if, if I do or anybody kids do, my wife, Sam, says it's a choice and she's not wrong. It is a choice. Bad things happen. God never promised an easy life for any of us. Um, we're going to have we're all going to hit roadblocks in life. What do, what do you do when you hit those roadblocks? It's how you react to those things that are going to make you a better person or a worse person. It's up to you. We all love entertainment, and most of us go to the movies. We don't make movies. I mean, I, I do, but most, most people are not movie makers and are watching television. They're, they're consuming music. How can we as consumers make a difference with what we see coming out of the entertainment industry? I think, once again, be more vocal. Stop watching the things that they're putting out there that deal with all this negativity and anger and hate. You know, it's it's weird to me. I, I did a movie, Let There Be Light, that I directed. My wife co-wrote it along with Dan Gordon, who's an amazing writer. Dan was the showrunner on Highway to Heaven. He wrote 60 of those episodes. And um, we opened word of mouth. Again, it was a low-budget movie. We opened number two per screen average against Thor Ragnarok, this $300 million movie. I get a call the following Monday after opening box office weekend from Netflix. They said, hey, we see that you have a good following in this this inspirational world. We want to open an inspirational division at Netflix. Well, this is when I was still living in Hollywood just before we moved out here, uh, living out, you know, in the area you're out there in Thousand Oaks, which I love. And, um, you know, I had three meetings over like a month with them, gave them wonderful products, had great conversations with them. And ultimately, nothing happened, which I don't get. And I told them, I said, guys, there's 80 million homes that want this. It is called show business. You, you can sit there and, and have your ideologies, but at the same time, you are a capitalist business. You can you can pretend like you're not, but let's face it, Disney and Paramount Universal want to make money. So um, why do you not want to promote movies like this that have a something you know something that has a positive message? They would never do a um, a touch by an angel in today's world. They just won't do it. They'd be too corny and sappy in their minds, you know. So. Uh, it, it's I've got some great products. You got some great products and why we can't get these out there in mainstream Hollywood. It, it, I wish I had the answer. But the only thing I can say is, uh, once again, they, they would rather promote a, a darker secular point of view of the world instead of pointing something that has light and hope and love and laughter in it. Well, I think the things that you're saying are resonating with a lot of people more, more than we recognize. And we're beginning to see the uh, the tides change. Yeah. I believe that God is still calling people into the entertainment industry to be doing the things that you're doing, to do the things that I'm trying to do. What message do you have for those who feel that calling on their life? Go for it because there's a great impact. Right now, I'll tell you, I get every week, every week, I get at least a half a dozen emails from people around the world 
whether they're from a Muslim country, whether they're from, uh, you know, Russia, China, and say, your movies have uh, made me turn into a Christian. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like an amazing, amazing, uh, you know, message to hear out there. And the first time it happened was after God's Not Dead. I was at the airport with my family in Salt Lake City. Woman walks up to me with her little seven-year-old baby daughter, and she says, uh, are you Kevin Sorbo? And I said, just for today, yes, I am. And she said, well, I'm from Iraq. I live in America, but your movie, God's Not Dead, I became a Christian. I just got baptized. She starts crying. I start crying. My wife starts crying. We start praying for her right there in the middle of the airport. And I, I, kind of, I got goosebumps telling that because it's just, it's amazing to me that you can see this happen. And I have read a number of different articles that the fastest growing um, uh, countries of Christianity are Russia uh, uh, and China. So that shows you that communism, socialism, when it depresses people down to the lowest possible level, they get to that place when they go, there's got to be something better. And they start looking up, which is uh, which is pretty amazing. I love it. You know, uh, when usually when you say that you've been used by somebody, that's a negative derogatory term. But there is nothing more positive and there's nothing more uh, invigorating than to realize that you have been used by God to bring someone to spiritual life. And I'm so excited to hear stories like that. And I'm so thankful that God uses guys like you and me in the entertainment industry to point people to Jesus. So uh, Kevin, thanks so much for sharing all these experiences and stories with us today. Uh, we were not disappointed. Now, if you don't get that reference, uh, you could look it up on YouTube. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the Kirk Cameron on TVN YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And be sure to share your takeaway in the comments and invite a friend to join the conversation.